Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome to another video. To a really requested one, by the way. So, I'm really excited to do this, actually. And uh, that is, I'm gonna show you how I do my screen tones and such. Okay, so I started off with uh, transferring my drawing to a multimedia paper. I just want to say one thing. I used something I already drawn some time ago because I have the huge... Um, kind of a inspiration block and I can't and can't I just can't draw anything right now so I uh, just transferred that sketch or that picture onto another one use this multimedia paper it's in 120 grams I made the outlines with my black India ink that's pretty much all I used let that dry and then you're good to start here's something where I want to tell you I've done a lot of manga pages with a normal printer paper before however it's not something I would recommend you can still do it but I wouldn't recommend it since the printer paper is so thin uh, later on when we have to cut stuff on top of the paper you might just cut into the paper super easily or you might tear it so I would go with a little bit thicker paper you can also just get printer paper that's a little thicker than I'm used to really really thin printer paper so just look for a thicker paper basically and it also shouldn't have too much grain so it would, shouldn't be aquarelle paper it should be very smooth and flat paper too so before I start showing you how I do my screen tones I still wanted to educate you a little bit if you didn't know what screen tones are I do have some myself I got these a few years ago and they are from Deleter. I don't think there's any other brand that makes screen tones at least not that I would know and I got these for about five bucks a piece so it's pretty expensive and that's why I wanted to make my own kind of version where you don't have to buy these so screen tones are super crucial in manga drawing because they do all the shading so instead of just being all grayscale and ink washes and whatever they are actually they have some texture to it it's basically a sticker that has been print it on and then you can stick it onto your paper and cut it out. Now it's not only because I'm a cheap ass and I want to save a lot of money that I don't like to use normal screen tones for my drawings, but also because I don't really like them. I think if you really want to use screen tones I would go for some really special ones, maybe a background or you know, very specific things that you can't just do yourself. What you're supposed to use normal screen tones is you basically put the sticker on top of your page like I'm doing here without taking it off the paper and then you cut out about the shape that you need for your drawing piece like where you're gonna stick it you take it off and then you stick it onto your piece and then you cut around it again to take off all the excess parts around it I mean it doesn't sound bad and it's a pretty great idea but I think maybe my screen tones are just really old or something but they don't really stick not just saying that because I, I know they're old I've, I got these few years ago um, I had them in my little um, Ziploc bag for all that time however whenever I put it on my paper it doesn't really stick too well like they come off really easily I was like this from the very start not just now that I've used them again or whatever it has been like this for since I started using them since I got them. But yeah, also sorry that my head is in the shot the whole time. Uh, I just, I, I can't help it. Otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's some pros about screen tones because they're not all bad. Now, as I said, they have cool designs and there is some that are really great and I would want to get them. Another pro is that when you do hair or stuff like that, you can scrape off the top of the screen tone to scrape just the print off. And then you're left with a transparent piece, which makes it look like you have nice highlights. It's just something you can't really duplicate with white ink or white out. Which is why I'd say screen tones are still somewhat better than the technique I'm doing. Both techniques uh, require a little bit of practice, by the way. And the technique I'm doing is a little longer, it takes a bit of more time and uh, is also a little bit more tricky and easier to mess it up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you first my little box. So here I have all my things in 
that I use for my screen tones. All of this started with stamps and then I got the idea and then I started using whatever scrap things I could to make kind of stamps. Now the main thing I'm using for normal and easy kind of screen tone effect is sponges. I uh, took some cardboard, I cut out a few pieces, stacked them together with hot, with hot glue and put some tape around it to make it kind of waterproof. And then with double sided tape I just sticked on the sponges. The reason why I did this like that is because the cardboard is needed so that it goes on all evenly. So it's a flat surface underneath the sponge and then you can make it very... Instead of having blotches, you know what I mean? Really takes the texture of the sponge evenly instead of just being bunched up and then making big blotches of black. I also made stamps out of these little stickers that were bows and other things. Just a lot of stuff that you can use up for this task. Okay, so here's how I do it. First off, I use the lid from my stamps, but you can use whatever the hell you want to put your paint in. Now for my method, you should not use ink because ink dries out real fast and it's not water soluble, so it's not really uh, good for what we're gonna use it. So I just used this big bottle of black um, gouache paint that I bought some time ago. And the important part is you have some paint that is not hard that you can spread out and that you can uh, activate with water again. It's able to dry but you can activate it again by spraying some water on top. And then I just use my spray bottle here filled with normal water. Then you just kind of want to dip your sponge in it. Now you want to do that pretty lightly, not pushing down too much because it's a sponge and it's going to take up whatever you give it to take up. And the paint should be spread out really evenly, otherwise you're going to have big black blotches on and inside of your sponge. And when you dab it onto your paper, this is going to show up. Okay, so before we can put on our whole paint on our paper, uh, we need to tape everything. For this, I'm using masking tape. So the masking tape is pretty sticky and if you put it down like this, you will not be able to just take it off again afterwards it will 99% it will tear your paper what you need to do is you have to stick it somewhere where it will take away the stickiness we've all done it as kids where you put some tape on your hand or something like that and it loses its stick and that's what you want to do but on purpose this time so you just want to stick it on your hand or your arm or whatever. Being in mind not to stick it on top of your arm because you have hair there and we all know how that feels. Not pleasant. Okay, and then you want to put the tape down next to each other. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to tape off all the hair. So you want to put the tape and you cut, you want to put it next to your drawing, cut it to the right size, put it on your arm a few times, lift it off and stick it on again until you feel like it kind of lifts up the edges so it doesn't really stick too well anymore. Even if you think, oh, I, it's too, um, too, too much stickiness is gone, like it doesn't, it's not going to stick to anything anymore. Try it out. If, it might just stick to your paper enough, even if you think it's not going to. So then you want to put the tape next to each other and you want to overlap it like a tiny, tiny bit just so you're sure that it's not going to make a gap and the ink can go between those gaps. Before you're all like, ew, you're, you're gonna make the tape greasy and it's gonna go all over your paper. It doesn't happen, it just takes away the stickiness. Nothing goes onto your paper unless you would dip it in oil literally or put it somewhere where you're really greasy, like then yeah, maybe, but not your arm, probably not gonna happen. So if you think you're real smart and you think, oh, I can just put it on my t-shirt, that's going to help. It does not. Um, it doesn't work if you put it onto clothes and then you have all these little pieces of, of, of fabric and everything on it. Then it's not going to work as well as if you take away the stickiness. Another thing you want to be careful with is hair. If you get a hair stuck in on your tape, take it off immediately. Don't even try to stick it down on your paper because that's going to be really annoying later on. Okay, so as you see me do right here, I flattened the tape out with um, this 
pieces of plastic but you can use a ruler or if you have one of those just use that other than that you can still use your fingers one thing you really need to be careful when you flatten out the tape is that your hands are not dirty if you do it with your fingers because otherwise you can put on dirt right next to the tape and then when you lift off the tape later on you're gonna have these really gross edges and your drawing is gonna be ruined okay so here's a tip for me I realized this only afterwards after I did the whole hair um, that there's another method with the tape that can save you a lot of time and tape instead of doing it the more logic way where you just put on tape next to tape next to tape and then cut it out and then lift off the stuff where you want to have the ink down and then put the ink down and then take everything else off you just kind of want to go around the edges but with the tape like you can see me do here and then after you put one piece of tape down you want to cut it out immediately and then you want to do the next step don't put all the tape down and then cut it out because that's gonna be a lot harder since you're gonna have multiple layers of tape especially if you do this method this is a good thing for especially for bigger things like the clothing as you see me here or uh, even the hair I'm pretty sure that's a way better method to do the hair and around the edges where you won't, don't want any ink to go but there's no tape you can just put on paper like scrap paper you just kind of cut it to size and then you stick it around it and that way it saves you up a lot of tape a lot of time okay back to the hair one because I want to show you the sponge technique so what I did is I cut this out and then I just lift or I just take off all the tape that is inside the hair this is pretty crucial even though it sounds kind of stupid obviously you want to fill in the hair so you have to take out the tape that is where you have to fill it in that mistake a few times at the beginning where I just took off what was around the hair instead of what so basically the wrong tape I, I took off the wrong tape that's so why I'm here I'm here to help you all out so you don't make the same mistakes as I did and then again as I said I just put on the paper around it so it's protected because I don't have to fill everything in with tape obviously and then you just put the sponge in to your whole um, palette with your paint you dab it in really lightly as I said and then you just transfer that onto your drawing before you do that I would still use a scrap piece and try it out first before you put it onto your real art because um, as I said if you have like big blotches of black at least then you'll know where they are and you can prevent it from ruining your piece so as I said earlier we don't really have an option to scrape off the screen tone to make any kind of light sources and shimmer in the hair so the way I do it so it doesn't look too weird and too amateur where it's just a solid piece of color kind of thing I do a gradient so on the bottom of the hair I do it pretty dark and then going upwards I go lighter and lighter however I also do a similar thing when I color my hair um, with normal coloring process so you might want to do it differently but like it's not like I'm I wouldn't mind if you do it like I do I don't I don't care and uh, yeah there you can see me kind of mess up because there was a little bit too much ink or paint on one point of the sponge and now it's on the middle of my thing I don't think it looks too bad it's not ruined but it's still it's not it's not good so after you've done all that what you want to do next is you just want to peel off carefully the tape around uh, what you just did always be careful not to use too much water in your paint mixture otherwise it can completely soak into your paper and when you try taking off the tape it's just gonna rip your paper so don't be too generous with the water and if you are because you want it to be a lighter color like more of a gray than a black then just wait for it to dry before you t take off the tape okay and there you go there you have your normal sponge technique the regular one um, keep in mind that using different sponges are gonna make a different kind of effect on it so you can use multiple different things and just cut them to size when you cut them to size um, you might have seen that before too is my sponges are all very weirdly cut that's why that's because I didn't want my sponges to have 
a hard edge because when you dab it you can see that there is an edge like that so you just want to kind of take off um, the edges a little bit in a weird way and kind of round it off okay so talk about another method I like to use so I'm using these um, packaging pieces where basically it's a piece of plastic and there's a lot of holes in it um, they're made like for bread and stuff so the bread can breathe I guess and I got these from you know just buying bread and stuff like that so I saw it and I was like oh that's pretty cool so this is a great technique where you can make the screen tones that look like they are normal dot screen tones I guess and for this one I'm using a makeup sponge because it has a way 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 smaller texture and that way I can just put it in my ink and the, or my paint and then I dab on it multiple times so I'm really sure it gets the dots um, nice and flat and then you lift it up and it just leaves you with these nice dots and that brings me to my last way I can do it so this is something you can only do if your paper is not too thick the best way it works is sadly with printer paper the thinner the paper the better however if your paper is like mine and I noticed this it's also fine because my paper has a little bit of grain since it's a little thicker so basically what I'm doing is I'm using this pencil that is not exactly a normal pencil it doesn't have a wooden casing it's just all lead and then I have it flatten out a little bit on the side and with that I just go lightly over the things I want to shade mostly I shade stuff that is white or skin with that here's why I said it works best with really thin paper because mostly um, the idea was for me to put something down like a paper or uh, in this case a book that has this nice texture on it when I and then when I go over with my pencil it just puts that texture on the paper it still kind of works but it works best with printer paper um, just in case you feel like oh my god I don't have a pencil like that uh, it also works with normal pencil I just like using the thicker one because it makes it flat it's it's better to be flat at the end than a normal wooden case pencil because the lead is so small compared to this one what I wouldn't use is a mechanical pencil because I don't think that would work really well just be careful to not use it to be super pointy and to go very lightly over the paper with the pencil then I have also another method where I just um, I basically have these stamps that are these punch hole punches kind of thing where they make these nice forms and shapes and then I just use my makeup sponge again and I just go a little bit lighter than I would on the little dots one so it still makes a little bit of texture for that you can also use different sponges as you want to and then you just kind of put it in the background or you can put that on clothing after you tape it off too that way you can have some nice things on clothing and some more effects and then of course I have my normal little stamps um, which are the only things I do use ink for all right and that's it uh, I do have some more little tips on making effects with this kind of these kind of methods however um, I think that's enough for today and I'd like to make a different video about that once I'm able to do it a little bit better right now I'm not really good at it yet okay so don't forget to like and subscribe and um, write me a comment if you have anything you want me to cover and explain any questions etc or a tutorial you would like to see follow me on instagram and i'll see you next week bye